be a little lower. It's like when I work on patients, I always have to just my table <laughs> much shorter than most of my nurses. Um, so what a gorgeous day outside. Um, we're enjoying the best part of a best season of Wisconsin right now. So my topic, safety in the sun, seems very timely. Uh, I'm glorious to you most, most surgeon at UW. I'm very glad to be here to talk about association of uh, sun rays, UV exposure, and the formation of skin cancer, and how to do some protection properly. I'm most grateful to see actually some of my patients walking over to me and say hello. It's a, it's a very special lecture. It's not it's different than giving to my students and my colleagues. So thanks for being here. I don't have any conflict of interest. Objectives are, are, are very simple. I want to recognize melanoma burden and UV exposure as one of the main risk factors and then learn how to use sunscreen and other, other forms of sun protection in a proper way so that we can actually enjoy days like today, many, many days. As Dr. Albertini mentioned, American Cancer Society updates the annual incidence of melanoma. This year, their estimate is over 97,000 cases. And it, it's the fifth most common malignancy. So we have a lot to, to, to deal with. And later on, my excellent colleagues in medical oncology and surgical oncology will, will share with us how to manage advanced melanomas. But like anything in, melan uh, anything in, in human disease, when you stay back and, and think in overall overall manner, what's really important, really do two things, right? How to diagnose melanoma early, because that matters, and how to prevent from happening. So early diagnosis really matters, because if you can see that the lines drops, um, this is a five-year survival rate. So it drops as melanoma gets deeper and gets more advanced. So if we can, if we can diagnose them early in localized fa fashion, and then their five-year survival would approaching to 99%. And then we don't really want to see patients like this. This is one of the patients I shared with Dr. Optini years ago, when melanoma really kind of advanced and advanced and metastasized to the skin and any part of your body, that's really late. So as a dermatologist and most surgeon, I have to plug this in. I know most of you guys know how to, how to evaluate your new mole or changing mole with A, B, C, D, E rules. Uh, I don't really want to spend most time on it, but just to, to say that this is a, something you can actually do self-check. And in this NCCN guideline, Dr. Opportunity is a panel representing our cancer center. It, it stands for National Comprehensive Cancer Network. It updates um, all the cancer management guideline annually for all kinds of cancer. So it's a really authoritative um, consensus site. And Clearly, it tells us that uh, uh, tanning beds and sun exposure is one of the major in environmental risk factors for melanoma. UV radiation is actually considered group one human carcinogen, kind of lumped together as cigarettes um, by WHO. So you might ask, you know, what really happens to sun exposure and melanoma? Studies have shown that the majority of melanomas are caused by the sun. And if you have one, a five, or more sunburns um, in your lifetime that it doubles your risk for melanoma. And then the, the early sunburn is, you know, if you get sunburn as a in, during your childhood, it is worse um, later on in life. So if you use sunscreen regularly, even just with the SPF 15 uh, or higher, it cut down your melanoma risk by 50%, right? Think about you know, how many things you can do to cut down a risk of skin cancer by 50%. That's sunscreen. So it's very important. Uh, and let's just dive a little bit deeper into what really UV does. And if you look at UV based on the um, uh, wavelength, it divides into three different components. The UVC is, is very short. It never reaches Earth. It's just kind of flipped, flipped, uh, reflected away in the ozone layer. And the middle part is UVB. That's the um, uh, a small fashion of it kind of reaches to the Earth and then reach to your skin. So if you look at that, the diagram here, the skin has epidermis, which is paper thin, and below that it's called a dermis, and below dermis that's subcutaneous fat. So UV, UVB actually just barely touches epidermis and never reaches dermis. The majority that reaches uh, Earth, about 90%, actually penetrates deeper. So the longer wavelength UVA goes all the way to your to your dermis. <clears throat> so if you look at all the studies, it shows actually UV as a photocarcinogen, the shorter one, UVB, it kind of causes burning, immediate burning and erythema or redness. 
it is shorter wavelength, so it's blocked by windows, your know, car windows, and your your um, house windows, a glass windows, pretty easily. <clears throat> it it does cause direct cellular DNA damage, so it's a more kind of immediate effect. Uh, versus UVA, that's longer and it causes delayed tanning, and it penetrates all the windows. So like people would say, well, I mean, if I drive in the car, should I still wear sunscreen? Yes, because the window doesn't block UVA, which actually causes more damage. It's low energy, but penetrates deeper and cause longer term cellular damage. So in summary, there are lots of studies already show that the, the UV rays will cause skin cancer, aging of the skin. You see more wrinkles and um, thinning of the skin, particularly on the face and around eyelids, uh, and it causes immunosuppression and other damages. So I always want to put this fun, fun part in, and I, I just kind of talk a little bit here, but I mean, I'm not going to do a quiz or anything. You don't have to be great at it. But if you want to shout out the answer, that's great. So like, like I said, over you know, 90%, right? 90% of UV rays reach Earth uh, actually UVB, uh, UVA. Only about 10% is, is the UVA. Oh, UVB, sorry. So force and, and truth. Some people say I only need to wear sunscreen in the summertime. Is that true or, or not true? Yeah, correct. I mean, I, I think you guys already know. So people say, I do not need to wear sunscreen in cloudy days. Is that my kids tell me that, you know, so I had to educate them, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's not true. So basically <clears throat> the answer is, and in, in, even in cloudy days and 90% of UV actually penetrates clouds. So, I mean, you don't feel it, but it, it still reach your skin. And there is a refraction that actually amplifies UV uh, exposure. Uh, the snow does the, the, the majority of it. The snow reflect 80% of it. So that's why when you go skiing, you definitely have to do some protection, your eyes, your skin. Um, the risk of indoor tanning, I'm not going to spend much of time on it, but this actually does a lot of damage to young women, particularly and, you know female population, because they like to, to get indoor tanning and get ready for vacation. So <clears throat> it has a mixture of different wavelength of UV rays. Majority is actually UVA, the, the deeper one and up to 15% more UVA radiation than the outdoor sun rays, the natural sun rays. So it does a lot of damage. And then definitely that studies already show there's, there is a, a risk of melanoma formation in young female that does uh, frequent indoor tanning. So how can we have fun in the sun? These are two of my teenage sons. I have to plug that in because I always have to emphasize sun use, sun use, sunscreen use. Uh, my freshman year and sophomore year, um, both competitive tennis player playing for Middleton High School. They're uh, in, they're doing sectionals next week and then will be postseason individual stay and team stay next week. So we wish for um, the, 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 that this year Middleton High will get title because they are very, very close. Uh, they see the number one right now. Uh, anyway, so how do you use uh, sunscreen in a proper way? Our AAD website um, has very good information, but summarized in this slide. So um, we, we know that uh, one in five um, Americans will actually eventually develop skin cancer. So it's very common. Um, so sunscreen is one of the important tools. It's not the only tool you have in your toolbox, but it's definitely important. Um, so when you use sunscreen, uh, just a, a few important things, like you use SPF 30 or higher. You don't have to chase for crazy number like 180. Um, so 30 is, is, is the cutoff number. I'll explain later because that actually blocked 96.7% of sun rays already. And you want to look for broad spectrum. Years ago, when I first started um, as a dermatologist, I, I have to tell patients to look for small prints on the bottle or tube because uh, it tells you what great ingredients will block UVA. Uh, but a few years back, uh, FDA had a better regulation as, as any sunscreen you purchase on the market, it's going to say broad spectrum. But if there's no word, they cannot really do that word. That means that they don't block UVA. So you only need to look for a broad spectrum. Um, and then um, there is no such thing as waterproof. It's only water resistant. And typically it tells you 40 minutes later, you have to reapply or 80 minutes later, you have to reapply. And, or if you uh, sweat a lot, you have to reapply. Um, and, and, and the common mistake is people don't use sunscreen enough. So one ounce is, is basically fill your shot glass of uh, 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 this amount will actually um, uh, be sufficient to cover the exposed part of your body, like your face, neck, you know, arms and hands, things like that. Uh, and a lot of times if you use too stingily, like not thick enough, then you actually not, you, for example, if you use, you use SPF 30, you might actually only get benefit of SPF 15 or 10, right? Because you're using too thin. 
So those are common things uh, uh, to keep in mind. And then my patient asked me what kind of brand and, you know, uh, that doesn't really matter that much. And it's, it's really, you know, you, you like to use it and you use it often, right? And you keep, keep 30 or broad spectrum in mind. That's it. So on sunscreen, there are two different kinds uh, and, and the main category, one is called inorganic and uh, um, also um, called physical blockers. And the common names are titanium dioxide and um, um, um um, and then sunscreens that it's chemical on the right side, it's a, a chemical absorber. So, so the difference is that the physical blockers, it just reflect the uh, sun rays away. So never actually does anything to your skin. Um, and then um, the absorbers, basically they will do chemical reaction and, and, and then just make them into something that wouldn't do any harm to your body. So people actually have more allergic reaction to sunscreen uh, you, uh, with these chemicals instead of a uh, uh, some blockers. Um, okay, so SPF, I mean, uh, I know most of you guys already know it stands for sun protection factor. It measures really how well our sunscreen product protects, protects your skin from sunburn. So SPF 30, which means it actually allows about one thirtieth of um, UV rays kind of reach your skin. So, I mean, it basically protect uh, uh, 29 out of 30s, right? So that's your math. So 50 will be allowing one uh, out of fifth um, going to your skin. So, I mean, with that in mind, and is that false or true? It's like if we say sunscreen SPF 30 is twice as good as SPF 15. Is that is that as simple as that or it's not true? It's not true, correct. Very good. And then sun, is there any sunscreen that could filter sun rays 100% if you use 100? That's not true either, right? Because uh, basically that's your simple math. I mean, as I said, SPF 30, it just blocked 96.7%. That's how you do your math because it allows one out of 30s, right? So SPF 15, that drops 93.3%. So if you if you have SPF 100, that basically block like 99%. So nothing is 100%. You still have to use your uh, judgment. Um, again, our AED has really a, a excellent um, uh, information for public. And if you just go into the website of AAD, American Academy of Dermatology, I have a, a lot of question and answers uh, for sunscreen use. So I have to mention other means of sun protection. Uh, obviously sunscreen is not the only way. So you seek shade. Um, you also also wear really good UV protection clothing. I mean, nowadays like they're long sleeve, they're easy to breathe. Uh, they look colorful, you know, you do wide brim hat and then Common thing people forget is your back of neck, your ears, right? So you have to cover that and sunglasses for your eyes because it's really hard to apply sunscreen around your eyelids. I mean, when you sweat, I mean, you just kind of, you know, your eyes can really, um, uh, you, you will be, become like watery, things like that. So you want to avoid um, the mid middle day, like at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, sun exposure as much as you can. Uh, and then for um, people like really work outside, I mean, you, you, you want to, drink plenty of fluids, right? You get too hot and losing fluids. And I also want to just plug one slide in just to, to mention that there's common misunderstanding that, you know, people worry that if I, if I do some protection, what would I get vitamin D deficiency? Yes, I mean, the vitamin D deficiency, uh, vitamin D, it, the sun, the skin is one of the big organs like in the vitamin D formation. However, uh, sunscreen use wouldn't really result in vitamin D deficiency if you can just properly take that in your diet. So there are, you know, you can take from your diet or you can actually just do supplement. And there is a numbers you can follow like for adults and for uh, children, um, the international unit, how much you need to take. Um, so I'm doing good on time. All right. So I really want to thank my patients and my colleagues for all the support. And I want to thank Doom Foundation to support my career um, all these years. Um, I got Doom Foundation career grant uh, for, for one of my study actually related to skin cancer, melanoma, and squamous cell carcinoma. Thank you. And here's my email. If you guys have questions like you can think of today, you know, think later, you know, more than welcome to just reach out to me. Thank you very much for your attention.